Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is my video on my journey to Islam. My journey started out in sixth grade. I went to a Catholic school and we were in the prayer corner and it was the it was around the anniversary of 9-11 and a few of my classmates at the time were talking about Muslims and Islam and don't listen to them people and they're bad and of course as being so young you know kids often say whatever their parents are saying and without knowing the full story or the full definition basically we say whatever they say so I never really questioned to look it up and I never knew anything about what those terms meant. All I knew during 9-11 was we had family in New York and our biggest worry was their safety. And alhamdulillah, they are still safe and sound. So when I wanted to look it up, it was around the time of people were saying, don't look things up on the internet. Don't look up this, don't look up that, because if you look up certain things, the government will find you, think you're a conspiracy, think you're a terrorist, think you're an extremist, think you're a fundamentalist. So, as any child, of course, of my skin color, was terrified to look up anything on the internet, it would say anything on the phone, basically. So, by my senior year, we had a class called World Religions, it was and while we were, you know, reading about the different world religions, you know, we talked about Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and all the major world religions. And we got to Islam, and I was saying to myself, all right, this is my chance to figure out something. And when I was reading, and while we were reading it, I, I pondered on a few sentences in the textbook, and it said, Islam believes that there is one God. I said, we believe there is one God. I said, Islam believes that Jesus is a, is a prophet. And I said, we also believe in Jesus. So with those two main things, I said, then, then what is the main issue between Christianity and Islam? If they believe in the prophets, if they believe in the one, if they believe in the oneness of God, what is the big difference between these two religions? And one day I was, we were at, we had a mass, and I asked the father in the in the church. I said, I believe in God. I believe there's a, there's a last day. Why am I going to hell just because I'm not considered a Catholic? And he didn't answer my question. And at the time, many, at the time for anyone, whenever you're a teenager, that's when you ask the most questions and people don't give you the answer or a satisfying answer that you want. You know, you start trying to find different venues to find truth. And when he couldn't give me an answer, that's when I knew that there was more to this than what meets the eye. So after graduation, I pondered in music. And when I, when I was doing music, basically, I found myself really enjoying music, writing music, listening to different genres of music, different eras of music basically, and me wanting to do an album, I did it online on, re on, this, on this one website. And when I released my album on the website, the last song I wrote, I wanted it to be a different story that I've always told. And the last lyric I wrote in the song was, Bang, bang goes the gavel. There he goes, turning another religion, jihad. What made me come up with that line was the majority of African-American men, black men, 
the way census has changed since 2012 is when the majority of African American men, black men, are incarcerated, they end up changing their name, they end up finding another religion, and the majority of them turn to Islam. And the only reason I knew that was when I was writing the lyric down, I was trying to figure out a different word for struggle. And most people, if you know music, you know about slant rhymes. So I had the word gavel, and I had the word struggle, but I didn't want to say straggle. So I said, what's a different way I can say the word struggle, but then end the song right then and there without even having a rhyme? So I typed it in, and I said, what are the different ways to say the word struggle? And one of the first things I came up with was jihad. And I said, what is jihad? I didn't know what that was. So when I clicked on it, it says an Islamic term meaning struggle. And I said, yes, I can actually look something up about Islam without being seen or thinking of being seen, right? So when I put in the song, I put that lyric in, I just ended the song. And knowing what I said and knowing what I know now, basically when anyone hits, basically when the judge hits the gavel, the person on the stand will go through jihad. They will go through a struggle. So when I joined, so after I was done with music, I ended up joining the military. When I joined the military, it was for self-discipline, which many people who do join the military, they have that sense of needing self-discipline, right? So one thing that was said to me was on Sundays, you can go to the Muslim service and you can sleep. And majority of our majority of the, um, the soldiers, my battle buddies, we said, "You can sleep," and we were, and they were like, "Yeah, you can sleep." And they don't care. And we were like, "Okay." So, before we went, you know, we all went to our original services that we we're so accustomed to, and I went to the Catholic service. And me thinking there's something to be different, it wasn't different. It was the same type of service same type of mass that I was so used to that I said, I have to find something different. They, it, I'm only here for nine weeks, might as well. Right, so one Sunday, me and a few other battle buddies, we went to the Muslim service, they called it the Muslim service. And while when we went, we walked in and people were lit, people were sitting on the floor with their shoes off sleeping and we said wow, you, you can really do this and my battle buddies you know they caught up on some sleep and I was so intrigued I was so interested in what was going to be said that the questions that are being asked were not questions of what is Islam there are mainly questions of did this person do this did this person do that did such and such a person do this? Why did this happen? Right, so when the yeah. staff sergeant, when he was answering these questions very justly, very fairly, I asked the question, I said, do you all have a book? And he said, what do you mean? I was like, we have the Bible. Do y'all have like a book y'all read? And he said, yes, we have something called a Quran. And I said, what is that? Do you have that I can see? And a few of the other battle, a few of the other soldiers that were awake, I said, "Yeah, do y'all have a book? We want to see it. We know about, we know about. This says that. And this says the other." And the staff sergeant said, "We don't have a book with us. And the only way for y'all to get a book is to go off base, because if you bring a book, they'll think we're propagating." So we didn't want to get the staff sergeant in trouble or get the services removed completely. Right, so the next Sunday we went 
And the staff sergeant and another staff sergeant had two big boxes. And they said, here are some Qurans. We were able to bring some Qurans and we were all astonished. We were all amazed. And we were like, how are you all able to do this? And the staff sergeant said, if you ask the question, according to our religion, we have to deliver the message of truth. And if we do get kicked out of doing it on base, you can always come off base. So we're all giving Qurans, we're all reading, and I still have the same Quran I had since I was in the military, right? So whenever we got whenever when we got back to our um basically when we, when we got back, you know, we were reading. It was only me and another battle buddy who got one, but we were reading and what interests me so much about the Quran was there were words in there that I recognized back in Catholic so back when I was in Catholic school, like the word Torah, the word gospel, the names of prophets, and I was so interested in thinking it was going to be the same type of in the beginning, like the Bible that it was certain chapters that some were short, some were long, that interest me. And whenever I, while I was reading, my mind was so open into realizing what this religion actually is based off of what I'm reading compared to what other people are saying. The battle buddy of mine who also received one he gave me his Quran back and I said, why? And he said, everything I'm reading, there are some things that I agree with and there are some things that is conflicting with what I knew growing up. So how are you able to read this? And I told him, I said, well, you know, I have an open mind. I'm not gonna look at a book and disregard the whole thing just because it disagrees with things that I no, I'll read the whole book as a book like like I'm, like I'm doing a class assignment in a book report, right? And then I'll make my judgment, I'll make my claim after. And Alhamdulillah, I gave it to another fellow soldier who became a Muslim during AIT. Right, so while reading this translation of the Quran, I said to myself, I said, there are many words in here I don't really know, like the word zakat, the word khrab. And they were very difficult for me to say just because I didn't know the language. So I read the Quran as level best as I could around that time. I had it underneath my pillow. And it was like a daily routine. And if you've ever been in the military, you know, you get up, you get ready for formation and you go downstairs. The Quran was part of my routine. I kept it underneath my pillow. I read it whenever we had to do bed changes. You know, I put it in my locker. Whenever we came back, we fit, we made our bed. I put it right underneath, right back underneath my pillow. I took it with me to the fields. You know, put it in my pocket. You know, it's, you, as you saw, it's a really big book, and you know the pockets they give you are really small. I tried to fit it as much as I could. As you see, it's very, very bent, right? So, but I read it as much as I could. I read a lot through basic training through AIT. And when I was done with it, I said, okay. Then I said, is that it? Do I read this book? Understand? understand by reading it and then I'm done with it and when I came back home that wasn't the case when I came back home I was still searching I was like what what, what else is there more there has to be more than just reading a book I can read it multiple times but I'm not grasping anything out of it there's so many words in there that I don't 
understand that yes I can look it up but there's so many things I can look up that it would be so conflicting to figure out what website or what person is trying to help me out and at the time I didn't understand that and one day a buddy of mine he said meet me at the store and while you're there before I come go in the store and there's a guy there who is very intellectual very smart and he'll probably help you in figuring out what you're trying to figure out when I walked in the first thing he said is do not let the ice melt and I'm thinking what does he mean and he handed me this this Quran and I said to myself I said is he does he know what I'm trying to figure out and when he gave me that when he gave me that translation of the Quran it was much more easier for me to read just because when I was comparing the two different translations I saw the word Zakat and I was like oh that means charity I saw the word Rab and I said oh that means Lord and it was much more easier for me to read much more easier for me to remember while I'm reading and Alhamdulillah, now that I know more of Arabic, I'm able to read the first translation that I, that I received which much, with much more understanding, much more depth. And when he gave me this translation of the Quran, you know, he spoke to me with questions. He gave me, he, he, he made my mind ponder on certain aspects of life that many people disregard and that's what I was trying to figure out right so when he gave me the translation of the Quran I went back to see him and he started asking me certain questions such as what is virtue what is peace what is happiness and to my level of best knowledge, I answered him the best way I could, but he, but he then answered those questions with a more simplistic question that you would think will have a complex answer, but it doesn't have to have a complex answer. And he made me understand Islam without speaking of Islam. He made me understand how to be a Muslim without saying, this is what a Muslim does. He made me understand the religion without speaking of religion. And that was the best thing that I understood because he invited me in without saying, here's a card of what we're doing. You can read it or not read it. And it was very intuitive for me being, for me, because it was something that I needed to figure out who I was first, right? So one day he said, you know, when I figured, when I, when I realized he, what he was what he was talking about, one day he said, "Come, you know, see me on Friday, and I'll show you how we how we worship." So. Right where I went to school, there's a mosque in the area. And I said, there's a mosque right here. You know, the whole time I'm there, my knowledge didn't say, my mind didn't say, my intuition didn't say, type in on Google, mosque. And, you know, most people ask questions. You know, nowadays they'll say, but what is this? What is that? And yet they have, you know, the gadget. They have this technology in their hand right there. And they can look right up. And when I got to the mosque, it was very amazing to see how the brotherhood 
was between them. There was no idle talking. There was no arguing. There was no, this person's mad at this person. You know, there were so many different people who came together, who listened, and when they, once they were done, they went back to do their regular job. And at the time I said, this is the whole thing. And he said, yes. And me growing up, you know, with a Christian family, going to a Catholic school, you know, the majority of people, as you know, you know, you go to a church service, you know, you're there for a while. You're there before, you're there during, you're there after. And then there's many, and then there's a lot of hostility between this person and that person and this person was with this and this person did that and this per it was it was a lot of hostility and that should never be in where you're worshiping and me going to the mosque I did not see that at all right so after that I said is my journey over right before we left the mosque he asked me to come up front and the Iman at the time he said did Brother Ali force you to come here? I said no. He said did Brother Ali force you to say what we're going to ask you? I said no. And he said alright am I he said am I forcing you to say anything? I said no and he said because you know in our religion it says do not go extremes. Do not force your religion on anyone. And it was very interesting and very inviting to hear that just because for anyone who is a Christian, they mainly a Christian, you know, if you whenever you go to a, a certain church, if you don't join that church, they look at you wrong. If you don't want to be that type of Baptist or Methodist or Presbyterian, if you don't continue going there if you don't fill out that card they give you so they can call you email you email you then they look at you as the worst person ever and it's not the church per se and it's not mainly the pastor right but it's the company around there that's stuck in a mind frame of if they're joining us, they can't join anything else. And that wasn't the case. The case was you can join, not join. And basically find your find find the way of truth by understanding the oneness of God. So when I said the Shahada as we all know, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah. I said the Shahada. Many people came to hug me. Many people shook my hand. And it was very warm and very inviting to see that. I didn't have to dip my body in water. I didn't have to come to so many different services. I didn't have to fill out a card and confirm an email. I didn't have to call anyone. I didn't have to do so many different things that many people do whenever they first walk into a church before they're accepted by that church. I didn't have to get any certificate. I didn't have to sign my name on some piece of paper. It was, if you believe, say this, you're in the house of Islam. If you believe it, if you don't believe it, you know, come back, say it again when you're when you're ready. And that's the main thing. It's when you're ready, not when such a test person is ready for you to do it. You know. So when we left the mosque, he said, "Come back anytime if you have questions." You know. I'll gladly answer them. And Alhamdulillah, I still talk to Brother Ali today. And he 
influenced me to make this YouTube video because me growing up, you know, we have this world of technology, this world of electronics, and the best way now to deliver the message is to go on YouTube, is to do something um, on a technological basis, right? And yes, we have books. And now with these books, we make audio books that you can listen to, you know, books in an electronic form that you can read, take with you. You know, you can find the Quran as an app. You can take it with you on your phone, open it, read it whenever you need to. And it was very helpful with him and other brothers at the mosque and all the other brothers on YouTube to listen to them and understand Islam, where they came from, how they started, where their journey started from. From people who said I was a Christian and I became a Muslim. People who said I was an atheist, became a Muslim. I was a Buddhist, became a Muslim. And to understand the different religions in an intellectual basis, an intellectual perspective without seeing what, you know, the media might show us about a Muslim, about a Christian, about this person, about that person. And when my, when I thought my journey was complete, that wasn't the case. And one day I went to go see Brother Ali and of course, you know, he has a store and he wasn't there. So one of the brothers said, do you have a Quran? I said, yes. He said, did you say the Shahada? I said, yes. He said, then what is your name? I said, what do you mean what's my name? He's like, what is your name? And I told him my name. He's like, no, what is your Muslim name? I said, I don't have one. And he was like, why not? I said, well, if I were to choose one, if I were to choose one, it will be Ahmad, just because of my name, as y'all probably see, it has an A in it. Most people think it has an E because they pronounce it, they pronounce it with an A. And I said, the most interesting thing I find in the name Ahmad is some people spell it as Ahmed with an E. But I were, if I were to choose one, I'd choose Ahmad because it has an A, just like my name has an A. And he said, from now on, you're Ahmad. And he folded up my the leg of my pants and he said, it's Sunnah. And it pushed me back. I said, why do I have to change my name? Why do I have to read more material? I thought the Quran was it. And when I was trying to figure out, I was like, no, there has to be. I was like, what is a sinner? I was like, there has to be something else. Like, what the, like what's a sinner? So when I looked it up. The first thing that brought me even closer to Islam is me being in the health field. And when I was trying to figure out things about health in Islam, the one thing that I read was after, you know, a male and a female use the bathroom and the male used the bathroom is one of the saying that the Prophet Sallallahu that the woman wipes from front to back and the man has to wash off what he had. And in today's society, of course, we all know if a woman doesn't wipe front to back correctly, she can get a UTI. And if a man doesn't wash off or shake off what he urinated, off of, then he can get an infection. And it was so interesting to see that the Prophet Sallallahu said something and, it's, and medically it's proven true that you have to do it or you'll get sick. And medically proven true that if a man or a female does not do this, they will get sick. 
and that brought me even closer. So I lo started looking up more health things about Islam and how to picture words together where I work, how I conduct myself. And while reading the Quran and reading the Sunnah and reading what other scholars say, it's very warming to me to see that. And even if they were, even if some people say that the Prophet ﷺ didn't initially say this, that this was a Greek or a Roman idea or a Christian idea or a Buddhist idea. The main thing was he said it in a way that medically you can still say it in the same sentence, in the same form. So I thought my journey was, when I, when I thought my journey was complete, it was still going. And to me, it was my journey to find Islam. And when I found Islam, it's my journey in Islam. So my journey is not complete. My, I'm still on my journey to Islam, to finding it, to being in it, to just finding it itself, my journey to it, right? So last year I was on the beach, me and my wife were on the beach. <clears throat> and while we were leaving, we were walking on the sidewalk and this one fourth or fifth grader, he had a mic in his hand he said, sir, can I ask you a question? I said, yes. He said, do you think you're going to heaven? And I said, by God, I hope I'm going to heaven. And he said, how do you know you're going to heaven? I said, well, believe in one God, follow the commandments, do good things, right? And God willing, you'll go to heaven. And he said, well, I want to tell you that God sent his son and I knew he was trying to say John 3 16 so I helped him out in saying for God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life and he said yes that and I said well okay and I just started to walk and this other guy came up and he said you don't believe in Jesus I said I believe in Jesus he said then why don't you believe what he said. I said, well, I believe that Jesus is one of the mightiest messages of God. I believe in his miraculous birth. I believe, you know, he is the Christ. I believe he gave life to the dead by God's permission. And he healed those born blind and left by God's permission. And he said,